In a meeting with Israeli and Palestinian leaders, UK Foreign Secretary David Miliband on November 17th said that sanctions and the international financial crisis were taking their toll on Iran's economy by adversely affecting oil, financial trading and banking sectors. The United Nations Security Council has imposed three rounds of sanctions against the Islamic Republic for its refusal to give up its uranium enrichment activities. The United States and other Western countries have also imposed unilateral sanctions against Iran in an effort to isolate the country. Though this relative isolation from the world's economy may seem to protect Iran from the negative impact of the global financial crisis, oil prices and a massive credit crunch indicate otherwise. On October 26th, Reuters reported the head of the Export Guarantee Fund of Iran, Kamal Seyed Ali, as saying, quote, Even though the Iranian economy is to some extent less tied to the world economy, the first impact on the Iranian economy is a drop in the oil price. Oil prices have fallen 60% from record highs last summer, and according to the Financial Times, overdue loans in Iran have increased 75% in three years to around $17.8 billion. On August 14th, the International Monetary Fund released a report which stated, UN and US sanctions against certain Iranian institutions have created difficulties for trade financing and payments, discouraged foreign investment and adversely affected the profitability of the targeted financial institutions. According to the IMF analysis, inflationary pressures are another challenge Iran faces, which the financial body reports was 24.2% in April 2008. To lower inflation, the IMF recommends Iran significantly tighten spending, cut the government budget, and increase the rates banks charge for lending. Miliband's comments came just few days after the G20 summit in Washington, where world leaders gathered to discuss what is being called the worst economic crisis in 80 years. At the summit, the G20 leaders, whose countries account for nearly 85% of the world's economy, vowed to continue their efforts to stabilize markets and aid emerging and developing countries gain access to credit.